I'm James Keith, and this is Racism in Football. My name is James Keith, and I am an aspiring sports journalist researching into the major occurrence of racism in football. Over the last few years, it has been a large part of the beautiful game, and I believe it's time we as supporters stand up together against this plague that has destroyed our national sport. I'm here today at Wembley Stadium to interview Jamal Wiseman. He's a black youth footballer based in Coventry City since the middle of London. And we're here today to talk about racism in football and thoughts on playing abroad. Indian youth face racist abuse on two occasions, Nida Manuwa in 2007 and Danny Rose in 2012, both being victims by Serbian fans and players. This led me to talk to youth footballer Jamal Wiseman. As a player, skill and attitude play a big role in how the fans portray you. Do you think if you have a bad attitude, players will portray you in the wrong way? Uh, yeah, examples like Balotelli, fans don't really like him because of the way he acts off the pitch. Yeah. On the pitch, he doesn't really care. Okay. After seeing uh, Serbia child faces comments towards England players such as Danny Rose and Zenit fans saying they don't want to be back or great players in their club, do you think playing the board is not an option? No, I wouldn't. I'd rather play in England because there is his chance. Because, yeah, maybe you might get better than he is there. Okay. I then spoke to Freddie London. In England, it's not so bad, so I'm comfortable with that. But yeah. obviously, the, the, you know, the media, what's going on in the foreign countries, especially Spain, Italy, you know, yeah. Serbia, and these countries, yeah, I'm very worried, very worried about that. But you know, England seems to be a safe country that brings the the youth through, no matter what colour they are. So okay. yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for your time. No problem. I learned a lot from Jamal Wiseman and Freddie London, but I knew my journey wasn't finished yet. My main focus moved on to the managers of the game. Former Chelsea manager Roberto Di Matteo seemed to be reluctant to answer questions when asked about John Terry's case. When Terry was found guilty for his racial views towards English defender Anton Fernand. I went to ask local coach Daniel Shoebridge and current football managers along with how they are developing the youth of the next generation. You've only recently started coaching and you'll be teaching the next generation of footballers. So where do you stand on racism in football? Racism in football? Uh, me personally, I, I think it has no place in the game. It has no place in, in modern day society as a whole, full stop. Um, I've actually recently finished my FA Level 1 coaching course and a big part of that was respect and racism was a big part of that. So we're being taught from a, an early stage as coaches that racism isn't acceptable, certain you know, behaviours aren't acceptable in football and they're not acceptable really in society anyway. So, you know, there's no place for racism. That's my thoughts. What do you reckon the future holds for football as a manager? In t well, in terms of racism, um, it's, it's down to society. It's, it's down to teachers and parents and everyone involved and then obviously football wise it's up to coaches as long as coaches are taught properly and taught about respect taught how racism doesn't have a place in the game then it won't happen because kids will learn from a young age and you know eventually it could well be cut out of the sport as long as the punishment's heavy enough I think it's there to stop people doing it but if they're taught at the right age and they know not to do it then kids kids won't use it and as they grow up they, when they're fully grown men they won't use it in the game either so There'll be no place for racism in football. If you were in Dean Mattel's shoes, what would you have done to John Terry? If I was in the same situation, I don't think Dean Mattel should really have to deal with it as much. Obviously, if he knows what's happened or he's seen what's happened, he should be upfront and honest about it. John Terry, I think everyone saw what happened. You know, everyone knows what he said. He's, I'd say he's got off quite lightly. But yeah, Dean Mattel shouldn't really have to deal with that. My next interview took me to meet a semi-pro footballer. I'm here today in Shoreditch, outside Old Street Station, to talk to Chelsea City winner Anthony Cook and to get his thoughts on racism in football.
In December of 2012, we saw Macclesfield captain Nate Brown suffer racial abuse from a power player in the FA Cup. And interviewing Chelmsford City player Anthony Cook, I learnt more about racism at a lower level of the game. Do you ever encounter racist abuse while on or off the pitch? Yes, I have. There was one particular incident that happened when I was playing when I was on loan at one stage when I was at Wagner. And um, he was playing lower league, non league football. And um, someone called me a black bastard. Oh, after all, when I was young then, I was a bit fiery. Yeah. And I, I did react to it. Uh, I did react to it. The referee obviously didn't know what was happening at the time. But I, it, 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 it does, it does affect you, and you don't really want to hear that when you're playing football. You're not expecting to hear that, but yeah, so yeah, it's not a nice thing. It's not something. Oh, well. yeah. Okay, back in December, BBC Sports stated that Nate Brown, Maxwell captain, was racially abused by Barrow in the FA Cup. Do you believe it's about the time the FA took just the function? I think they are. I yeah. think they are. I think they do highlight things uh, a lot more now, but it's it's proving everything. It's it's not easy to prove everything. You can say things have happened, but people, everyone, there's two parts of every story, so they, yeah. they could be interpreted in different ways. So, um, so I think they are doing a lot, to be honest, because it is highlighted a lot more. And now after the um, Rio Ferdinand, John Terry Anton Ferdinand situation, yeah. I think people are starting to learn on it a lot more. Yeah. You know, yeah. What's your view on FIFA as an organisation that deal with racism? I think it's it's. It's different in a world where FIFA do world football, and I think it could be done a lot better in, in other countries, such as Spain and, yeah, yeah. and countries such as when before the Euros, there was they, obviously they, were, they thought there was going to be problems when you're going over to Poland and then yeah Ukraine and all the races and so. But FIFA can do as much as they want, but it's the it's the fans and it's the, the, the and the FA of the country and. It's, They've got the bigger bands, not like 2,000, well, well, I think yeah. it was 16,000 pound yeah. fine. And Benta got 80 grand fine for revealing his boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, to be honest, that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. So you've got to, you've got to start fining big. Yeah. And so that's that, that, yeah. them countries that they've clamped down on it in net because they're losing money. Yeah. And then that, I think that the money really makes the world go around. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's, you know, that's, what, that's what they need to be done. After listening to Anthony, Jamal and Dan, I then came to my conclusion of what the future holds for football. In recent years, we have seen a number of high profile incidents including racism in football. Racism has become a large factor of the game and speaking to a number of players, coaches and fans, I've realised they all want the same thing and that is racism kicked out of the game. But we have to consider this might be the case unless everyone included makes an effort. As I believe it's about time football regained its image as the beautiful game. For football may never be perfect, but it's a game our country created. It's a game our country loves. It brings people together. And I believe it's about time we set an example for the rest of the world to follow. Because it is time for a change. I'm James Keith. Thanks for watching.